<laughs> we all have neighbors. You love them or hate them. There's no way of getting around them. If you live next door to someone who bakes you stuff, well, you're a lucky guy. And you're probably doing much better than the guy whose neighbors are always throwing ragers. If you can punch through this wall, you really are Flash Gordon. Are you going to do it? I'm going to punch through it. Come on, Sam, do it. Do it! Let's do it! Right now, this country has a crazy neighbor problem. And we're not talking about Canada, although there's something funky going on with Trudeau. We're talking about our southern neighbors, Mexico, who are in the middle of a hot war. Yesterday, Mexican officials arrested the son of El Chapo, Ovidio Guzman. And when you go after the cartel kingpin's son, you can expect all hell to break loose. For the past 24 hours, Sinaloa, Mexico, has become a battlefield. The cartels have just declared war on the Mexican government, which is ironic because the cartels own the Mexican government. So this is a civil war within a civil war. And if you think the Sinaloa cartel has anything to lose, you're wrong. They're some of the most savage and ruthless operators in the world. And life means nothing to them. As of tonight, at least 30 people have been killed, and the cartels are just getting started. Cities are being burnt to a crisp. They're setting buses, Humvees on fire, and just using those to barricade people in. The Sinaloa cartels are even trying to shoot down commercial airplanes with kids inside them. This is the kind of stuff we saw during the war on terror, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And now it's happening in our neighbor's yard. And they're not going to stop until El Chapo Jr. gets out. Sinaloa cartels already issued the Mexican government an ultimatum. President Obrador has 72 hours to release the kid or else they're going to start burning down federal buildings and gas stations. And this is all happening on the eve of Joe Biden's visit to Mexico. Biden's going there next week. We're really going to send our president into the middle of a war zone? Biden wouldn't even visit Ukraine. Can Mexico keep Joe safe? Mexico can't even keep Mexico safe. They can't even control their own prisons. The cartels are starting to break up the jails. Watch. <laughs> Primetime said it last night, arresting El Chapo's son was just Mexico's way of throwing Joe a bone before the visit, you know, make it look like they're getting tough and cooperating with the DEA. But no surprise, Mexico is already caving to the cartels. Today they announced they're going to keep Chapo Jr. in Mexico and not extradite him to the United States. In other words, he'll be back on the streets by Monday. What an ally. But it's not like Mexico can hold on. They're outmanned right now. They're outgunned. They're outfinanced. Sure, they're raining down lead from Apache helicopters, but the cartels have surface-to-air capabilities. And what's the United States doing about that? Nothing. We're just sitting back and watching. It's funny, right? We get involved in everyone's backyard. We arm Ukraine to the teeth, send them Patriot missiles, stingers, even Bradley tanks. But when something happens right in our own backyard, we don't do anything. Russia invades Ukraine and we send them billions of dollars in weapons. 
The cartels haven't just invaded Mexico, they've occupied Mexico. And we don't even talk about it. Narco terrorists are blowing up one of our biggest allies' governments. And Biden's plan for border security is an app on the phone? Open table for illegals, basically? And one of our own border agents was just shot by a cartel smuggler. Just shot. And the United States government just buries it. Isn't that suspicious? The cartels have been spying on us by sending their drones over our border. Cartel drones are spying on U.S. Border Patrol, and we haven't shot a single drone down. This country's so trigger-happy overseas, but we let the cartels wreak havoc all across Texas, Arizona, flood our country with narcotics and MS-13. Is this all part of the war on drugs? Is there still a war on drugs? In just a few months, we've sent 50 billion to Ukraine to fight Russia. But in 15 years, we've only sent 3 billion to Mexico to fight the cartels. Huh. And tell me if this is a coincidence. When Trump built a wall on the border and then threatened to designate the cartels as a terrorist organization, the FBI and CIA did everything it could to help Biden beat them. Are the cartels off limits? Kind of seems like it. Is the CIA working with the cartels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, short, short answer is yes. They are. <laughs> yeah, man. Not only the CIA, also, I guess every other agency in the U.S., it's very easy to, to unstabilize a country through, through, well, narco, you know, through violence, through truck trafficking mm. and all of that shit. And, and <clears throat> I know for a fact that some of these narcos, they don't even know they're being played by by US agencies to to destabilize um, you know the Mexican government or the US government's working with the narcos that is a giant scandal used to be a conspiracy theory that the CIA was working with the cartels now it seems like everybody just assumes they do is that in America's best interest the United States wants to destabilize Mexico keep them as our economic puppet keep them off balance and decentralized, just like a juicy labor market with natural resources that our multinationals can, you know, take advantage of. All you hear about Mexico is, you know, the resorts are beautiful, or you know, they have an avocado shortage, or if the caravan's coming, which you only hear about that on Fox. Do they even care if drugs are pouring through our country? Is the U.S. intelligence community just using the cartels? I'm not sure regular working class Americans are benefiting from this little arrangement. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.